What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Carson's IH Garage. So here we do something a little different. We're going to be doing my first ever revival. And uh, it is an IH, but it's probably not what you're expecting. <laughs> this is a 1970-ish, 1975, 80, whenever somebody could probably tell me. Uh, International Cup Kit at 1000. It's back when IH made uh, Cup Kit at Lawn Tractors for the home use. I see it's got the little IH logo there. And um, yeah, so... This has been sitting in my neighbor's yard for 20 years, he says. Hasn't been running. Uh, comes with its own shrubbery out of the seat. Uh, and so our plan today is to uh, revive it. It's, you know, see if we can get everything turned over after sitting for a while. Vacate some of the bees that are swarming around it because there's probably a nest. I'll go grab some spray. Um, see if we can get this thing moving. The tires seem like they got great life into them, like they're not cracked, which is great for me because I usually have terrible luck. It seems to go into gear when the motor spins over. It's got a newer battery in it, so see if that takes a charge. Clean the points, clean the carburetor, throw some gas at it, see if we can't trip this thing around and learn how to shift gears. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I'm gonna kind of clear out some of this foliage that is getting ready to take this thing over and uh, we'll see if we can't get on the other side because that's where the carburetor and air filter are and we'll, we'll see what tries to hurt us. <laughs> So um, I'll set you guys up and got some shears and we'll start clearing it out. It's a hot one today, but thankfully this is kind of shaded where I'll be working. Uh, so, uh, Let's lift up this cover and see what tries to, to hurt me here. I haven't seen any bees, but um, I don't know where to grab it. Uh, oh, no, I think we're good. Thank goodness, because every time I've kind of looked at this thing and learned more about it, there's always been a bee's nest <laughs> brewing. Um, not to say that there isn't one, but you know, it was growing out of there and it still goes all right well we're just gonna leave that alone um so at first glance it's pretty gross looking like under the hood and stuff but this just looks like mold not too much of it looks like rust i was thinking about restoring this thing but it's just got such cool patina on it i might, I might just kind of thrash it around a little bit at five miles an hour so uh check the vitals here not that this is vital but okay it's i don't know if you can see that or not but yeah it's got gas in it and it doesn't smell terribly old. It might have had stabilizer in it or something. Uh, but no matter what, we're not going to use that. We'll drain it out. Uh, if we have to, we'll run an auxiliary tank. Uh, let's see. Oil. Uh, I mean, it's got it. It's, uh, it's pretty dirty. But, uh, I mean, it smells a bit gassy, but... I mean, not not too bad. It's fine otherwise. Uh, there's a spark plug, everything like that. Uh, let's see. Boot still got a, a boot on it, and or things got prong still got a little little dealio on it. So um, I'd say let's let's get that side panel off, and we'll get the air cleaner clean because uh, I'm seeing remnants of some sort of nest or collection of some sort, and um, we'll see about. Uh, just cleaning out the carburetor just pulling the junk out of it like that's if there's any in there and maybe shoot a little starting fluid once we get those uh, points cleaned up so I'll bring you guys around and I'll pop that panel off so um, <clears throat> from what research I did I uh, just found that this thing is a 1000 uh, and it's kind of their middle of the road uh, track during what they call the quiet line series I think the reason they called it that is because everything like the motor and all, all the parts like that were isolated with like um, with mounts and stuff, and so uh, it was meant to be like a very uh, residential kind of quiet, sort of just a nice, nice mower to mow your lawn with, plow your driveway, what have you. Um, and uh, this little PB here it seems like it's a little stuck. Uh, I see it's missing hardware here and there. 
uh, but nothing too too bad. I'm trying to find all the bolts and and whatnot, and and trying to in an attempt to pop this cover off. And I'm thinking that 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 one in there is a, is going to be a pest. So let's see what we got in the in the mobile. Uh, oh, there we go. A little bit of PB and get a little movement going. Players. So um, we'll see about draining what's out of that gas tank. Maybe pop the tank off because I'm seeing two straps, and it's probably just the fuel line because uh, there's no like shut off or, or mechanical shut off. I'm sure. So um, we'll see if we can't uh, just drain it out. Maybe pop it off, flush it, take it home. Because uh, I live right across the street. <laughs> it's my neighbor's. Used to be my neighbor's tractor. Uh, but he passed away and he he left it to me. Nice guy, I miss him. Uh, but let's see, come on. All right, hold on. There we go. All right, so these side panels are are worth a good a bit of money. Um, probably around 7,500 bucks for one in this condition. Uh, and I'm missing the other one on that side. So we'll see if we can't find that. I'm thinking maybe I'd be in that shed over there. So I'll, uh, when I talk to the lady, uh, the guy's wife, I'll, I'll ask her if, if she may know uh, where where we could find it. So, uh, oh, this is pretty cool. Sticker is really, really good shape. Uh, it's just dirty. Um, all right, so we got a 10 horsepower cooler. I knew that. Um, ball bearings, internal governor, uh, automatic compression release. It's got the little thing on the camshaft to bump it, so it makes it easier to start. Uh, cast iron, yeah. So it is a it is a Kohler motor, single cylinder, of course. Uh, do not readjust carb radio. We don't know. Okay, we don't need to know that. So pop the air cleaner off. I don't know if there'll be anything back behind here. It might be super clean, uh, like it has been already. This is this is doing pretty good. It's not really rusty. It's just. It's just kind of surface rust. Uh, I've gotten pretty lucky. It's not rotting into the ground, but you know, you never know. So I'm not gonna try and put my hands behind anything till I, till I know. Okay, a little bit of a mouse nest fell out down there, and there's a, a little collection. But hey, look at look at that. I mean, it's not the greatest filter, but nothing an air compressor can't fix. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and. Uh, pop off everything like that so it looks like I'm thinking that's the flywheel in there I don't have a light on me uh, besides my phone here but I'm thinking maybe like um, you know Maybe you get air off the flywheel and it kind of like, it's like a forced induction type deal. Not a supercharger, but like a, there's fins on the flywheel that, that make it an air-cooled motor and the whole like a shroud is what, is what draws across these fins and cools it down. So that might be it. Uh, I mean like that. So looks like, um, got a free pair of vice grips. That's cool. Now they're kind of broken. Now we'll fix them. Um, Vice grips or vice grips. That hold the, held the choke cable on and everything like that. And I'm, I'm seeing here, I saw when I did my research online that this, this panel that we took off had a little thing for fuel. I'm thinking this is the fuel shut off. And this was pulled out. Like I, I found it like this and you could press it in to turn it off. I'm thinking that's how it is. Like there's just a little needle in there that you push in and it pops out to let fuel in. So this is probably full of that bad gas. It might be all crystallized and gross. Might need to get into a carburetor for it, but I'm hoping that we can clean it up and it'll work out good. So let's pop off the little air thing here um, and we'll see what the carburetor is looking like. Okay, yeah, so looking at this a little more, um, pop that out. Flywheel's down there. You can see the, the fins on it there. And uh, it's just a point to draw air from. So it's cool that this rubber little boot thing is still intact. And it looks like... Uh, for the most part, carburetor's in good shape. Fuel lines are just kind of gross looking. Uh, 
I don't think it still works. Looks like it's... More or less at idle. There it is. Yeah. So, that here's idle. And then as I pull this forward... Pops that open. So that's cool. We got, we got throttle. Uh, so we'll leave that at an idle until we gotta mess with it a little more. Uh, and everything like that. So now we'll work on ignition. Uh, now that we know this is all all clear and, and clean. Um, let's see, I might shut the fuel off and we might drop the bowl and just see how bad it is. Uh, just to get that pain over with, if, if any. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll see about shooting a little fluid at it and, uh, and, and getting it turned over. But I'll have to pull the battery out from under the seat and uh, give it a charge. It, the battery's only three years old, but it's completely dead. And lead acids have a reputation of not being able to take a charge after being being dead, dead for that long. Uh, so under here is the uh, the points. They're not behind the flywheel because obviously in this setup you would rip the whole freaking mower apart just to get it get it revived. Uh, and these points actually allow you to like through this little hole here. Um, they allow you to like static time the motor, so you actually get like a like a timing light. And you can flash it, and there's like a little T mark in there for top dead center. And if you point gap your points right, you can get like certain degrees and everything like that. So uh, I'll cover that in another video, but there are plenty of resources. Like Terrell Fixes All did a nice video on it, and then literally anyone else. Um, nice collection of, of ants down there. Make sure to stay away from, from those. <laughs> but um, pop this cover off, and um, we'll see about seeing how corroded those points are, give them sand, gap them, pull the plug, and uh, you know, before I do that, I'll grab the battery out, I'll go throw it on the charger back at my house, and we'll, we'll start working again. So the uh, the story goes that, um, oh, there, these are half inch, right? Because I had a 716th in my hand. <laughs> so uh, the story goes that um, my neighbor bought this tractor new, and uh, I think he, he said 78, so this would be a, a 78. And uh, and he used it forever and ever and ever. He didn't tell me if he mowed with it or not, so it might, he might not have the deck. Um, but uh, we'll see what we could do about that. But he, uh, he definitely plowed with it, because I remember him plowing when I was, um, I've seen pictures of him like back when my parents moved here before they, they had me. <clears throat> so, um, so he used it and he parked it about 20 years ago because uh, he got the, a new Craftsman tractor, uh, which is sitting over there neglected. I could kind of care less about that one though. This is the cooler one. Um, and so he um, he used that one to mow, I'm sure. And then he, he has a newer, newer Cub Cadet he only bought like five years ago. Um, and so this one has sat for 20 years and it was only about three years ago which matches up with the battery date there, that he tried to start it, and he said he couldn't get it to, to start. Uh, he said it wouldn't even fire over, and so that gas is probably around three years old. Um, and uh, it, the points are probably corroded, or maybe it has a stuck valve from sitting. We're not gonna know until we dig into it. Um, I'm hoping we don't have to pull the gas tank off and pull the head off. Uh, not, not that we're, you know, not going to pull the gas tank anyway, but it, it's my hope that we don't have a stuck valve or anything like that where I have to sit there and, and beat on it and work at it and maybe pop the valve out. It's so like work on the guides or whatever. I'm hoping it'll just be kind of a simple little revival here and I can have it in my driveway by the end of the day because uh, I took the day off from work for this and I want it to be worth my time. So uh, I'm gonna grab that other one off and then I'll charge it and I'll meet you back at the front of the tractor working on the points. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and pull the spark plug and um, and throw a little PB down, down this hole. Um, really gonna be that difficult. Um, and uh, see if we, I mean, I know it spins over, but um, 
Never want to spin it over dry after it's been sitting, especially 20 years. Um, so, I'll just drop my socket. Oh, I'll find it later. It's gone forever. Um, <laughs> so, the spark plug will tell you a lot about the condition of your engine, whether there's water in it, uh, whether it's burning oil, running rich, running lean. Uh, mm, not the, the greatest. Um, a lot of carbon, it seems. And, uh, otherwise it looks like it's running pretty much the right temperature and the right, uh, the right mixture, so. I think I might have a new one of these, but I'll just wire brush it. It's like new. Alright. Shoot a little PB, um, down its throat there. And, um, I pulled the little inspection cover off and uh, we'll learn about which way she rotates. Okay, we might be using WD-40 today, which is fine because that burns too. Um, just wanted to, to get it to a point. Don't you hate that when your can runs out of air? Like, you got like all the liquid is still there, but you're running out of air. All right, so that looks like a nice pool. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at these points anyway. I know the starter might be uh, stuck to the to the flywheel or whatever the case may be. Maybe the spindle's a little stuck, but um, we're still gonna go ahead and. We move on with our revival and we'll see what we could we could do that whether we bandage it back together or um might have to put in the order for the new one which i don't think it's very cheap um oh, that's nice they gave you a little hole on the side of the tractor to put your little screwdriver to get the last little thing out they wouldn't do that nowadays they're like screw you <laughs> um but this just means i'm gonna drop the screw now so there's that, but, um, God, I can't even see it, uh, there we go, so now we're turning it, uh, so, these points aren't like your points in, like, the distributor, um, these are gonna be something kind of like, not what you'd find in a car, but more of, like, like what you find in a tractor, <laughs> they're, um, they're gonna be, um, like, on a, not on like a slide, but more of a, I don't even know how to describe it, you, you can tell I'm struggling, but, um, one part of the points moves, like one half of the, of the contacts moves, and that gap is what determines your dwell, which pretty much in turn determines your timing, uh, on one of these single cylinder units here, on these Kohlers, um, they're known for using this method of um, yeah points are corroded they're sticking um, using the method of, of timing so I'm gonna have put you guys down for a second get the cover off completely and I'll meet you back here and we'll start cleaning them up a bit of corrosion the bottom of this cover here it's not grease it's it's rust um, but I'm not not too concerned about that because these points are looking pretty good but you can see um, the rubbing block has a gap between the the stop there, so I'll break these loose here and um, yeah. So every time that breaks, it makes contact. So um, got a little piece of like 220, something like that, and all I'm gonna do is uh, just pop it in between and. So I can do this one hand like a like a boss. Uh, come on, <laughs> wait, wait for it. No, not quite. Okay, wait. No, all right. <laughs> so um, wait, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna work on sanding these points, and uh, I'll show you how to gap them on here. So those points actually cleaned up really nicely. Um. They're almost like too clean for, for sitting. Um, 
maybe maybe it was the bad gas maybe it was clock carburetor that that didn't allow it to start for him but um whatever it is it's not really a problem now besides that starter so i'm gonna rotate it around and... okay yeah so the points just opened there so let me bring it back actually okay so they're open there so um whatever that is we're close to the top dead i'm sure and uh this is good enough to gap so i got my feeler gauges here and we're gonna find twenty thousands i know that's like the spec form that that's what i read online but when you static time you're gonna be changing the gap um as you as you do it so uh I'm just cleaning my my tool hold on it's got leftover garbage from the last time I did something. All right, so if I run that in there, it's a little tight, like the thing moves. So we're gonna go ahead and, and adjust those a little bit. And the way you wanna do that is you take a screwdriver and you pop it in here and you loosen that little number there. That little screw um, and that's gonna move the top half of the points, which is what I was kind of trying to describe before as I was struggling to get the cover off. All right, I'll have to put the camera down, but you're gonna adjust that, stick your feeler gauge in there, and just kind of push down on it until, um, of course, you, you got your, uh, your, your gap going there. So that's all you need to do, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll leave the cover off for now in case you have to make adjustments to it. I'm not gonna go throwing it back on but we'll see uh, about that battery. It seems like it's taking a charge and we'll see if we can get any power to the, the, the digitals up there. And it's even got keys, which is a, a nice bonus. So I don't have to hotwire it. So um, I'm gonna finish gapping those up and we'll check on the battery. Okay, got my points all gapped in. It's a tight 20 thousandths. Uh, just gonna eyeball them a bit, see if they move anymore. Cause I knew I, I was close to top dead. Not really seeing it so there they are closing and we're good so uh now let's take a look at the starter because if that sticks we're then we're, we're kind of screwed uh otherwise so let me go go peek over at that all right so turning the motor over and you can see hold on there you go it's stuck on the flywheel so that gives us uh, a few options. Either we, we run with it and we void the, the caution warnings and whatever and we strike it and, uh, and whatever, see if it'll, it'll do something. But I think for the sake of doing things correctly, let's pull it off uh, and we'll see what's, what's eating it. And this terminal seems pretty good. So we're gonna pop that off. Um, pop anything else off, looks like it's held on by the bracket down there. And I imagine uh, the disc pick's gonna become an issue, but maybe we got enough in there to, to kind of swing her out. So pop the terminal off, pop those off, looks like 9 16 So let's do it. So here it is, got the starter out. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with a little, probably WD-40, uh, but actually, look at that. I kind of just tapped it before, um, and it seems to kind of free up now, so. I think uh, we'll get her going again, and uh, maybe we'll go home and bench test it just to, to be safe before I go ahead and bolt this on. Because if it doesn't bench test at all, then you know it's it's just shot. So uh, we'll see about doing that uh, after we, we free it up a little bit on site here. So uh, surprisingly enough, the battery is, is taking a charge. It's doing pretty good, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and bench test this starter. So. I gotta ground it out in the vise and see if we can't get contact through it. Um, I believe it's supposed to shoot out, like the the not like like it's supposed to like 
kind of go like this or something to engage the flywheel and then it kind of goes out and then it will fall back in. I'm not sure. Um, which way did it spin? Is it a... Uh... Okay, so it spins this way. So facing this way, it spins clockwise. And that means the motor spins clockwise. Um, so this technically spins counterclockwise if you're facing it this way, but this whole little gear deal, that spins, yeah, this spins clockwise. And so that means, so this spins counterclockwise, and this must come in somehow, and I'm, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know if the starter's right. I'm gonna do a little research real quick and uh, and see what we're dealing with here, and I'll get back to you. So I think we might be okay with the with the starter. Uh, it doesn't stick anymore, so that's good. And uh, I'm seeing on the flywheel there, um, you know, like it's close, and and I don't know. We'll just just run it. It'll be fine. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of move these wires out of the way and clean up that mounting spot on the block because that's my only ground uh, for making the starter work. Just gonna go at it a little bit. And uh, looks like I already got some, some bare parts there so it's, it's a good enough contact and plus this goes right into the block and that's clean enough there so uh, we'll clean this up too. So yeah, there's that. All right, so I'm gonna throw this back on and um, we'll see about getting the battery. I'm gonna turn it over by hand a little bit more uh, and then I'll show you guys how to test the coil and condensers uh, so we can double check that everything in our ignition system is good. So if there's any problems, then we could just isolate them because we already touched the points. Now we're looking at coil, condenser, and um, if all else fails, it's probably the, the magnetic pickup. Uh, that could be the issue, which that's a little more involved job, and at that point, I'll I'll drag it home, and we'll see what we could do from there. But uh, but yeah, I'm gonna work it over a little bit by hand, get the oil working to the valves, see if we got any uh, any compression. Put my thumb over the spark plug hole, and I'll, I'll keep turning it over, test the gears, put it in first, and we'll see if it rocks forward a little bit, uh, and then grab the battery, throw it in, and we'll see if we get any crankage. So. <clears throat> this is one of the simplest ignition systems like possible you have your condenser which delivers your spark and then you have the coil that builds up the energy to become your spark and literally because this has one set of points and it doesn't have any timing it doesn't have a distributor it's a single cylinder setup you got a boot running from the, the primary winding of the coil to the spark plug that's your entire ignition system that's it's solely how it works and so what we're going to do to test the coils, we're going to find the positive terminal, which is, mm, looks like this upper one here, this upper terminal, and then the negative terminal, and we're going to test for ohms, and ohms are re resistance numbers, and we're going to see if our coil is still within the guidelines of, of being good, being usable. Uh, if not, I don't have any spares, unfortunately. You can pick these up for pretty cheap. Uh, this one seems a little kind of bloated, like it's a little... Type. It might just be the shape of it, how they manufactured it. I'm sure this is the original coil if it's painted black. Um, but um, we have yet yet to see. So uh, I'm gonna get the multimeter on it and I'll uh, throw out some numbers. And um, 3.84, which is right in spec. It's almost at the, the top end of the, of the spec uh, as far as secondary resistance. And then primary resistance it measured. Um, around like what was it 4,000 uh, ohms which is which is pretty pretty good I think it's perfect actually so I think our ignition coil is good um, I'm sure the condenser is good I mean I could I could test that I could just you put a, uh, the ground on here and the positive on there and you see um, and see what you get and it should infinitely um, like go up in, in resistance it should be infinite until of course the, the coil discharges and that's what gives you your spark but our starters back in everything like that got oil down the cylinder got oil in the crankcase we're not in gear let's hook up the battery and let's see if she'll turn over 
And if not, we'll start looking for fuses and stuff and, and uh, crusted out wires. But I think I think she should go. At least turn over, not not fire up. Obviously, the spark plugs out. But you know, let's give it a shot. <clears throat> so battery is mostly charged up. I think we got something of a neutral safety switch here because uh, that's probably what they would have had for the time being a, a home unit so we press down on that all the way what is that got nothing darn it It almost sounded like a fuel pump. Uh, I don't know. I'm... I don't know. I think we're in neutral there. All right. Yeah. There's something wrong with the wiring. Darn it. Um. All right. Let's get an extension cord and uh. See if we can't uh, bump the starter. Oh, you know what it is? It's the it's the hour gauge there. It's kind of ticking along. What? That's too bad. All right, gang. So here's where we stand. I um I wasn't able to turn it over with the key. We were getting that weird buzzing noise. Still don't know what that is. The clock works, so clearly it's getting power up to there. But there's something wrong with the key. It might be the solenoid, because I know they, if they sit, they might get screwy. But, you know, I want to get this thing out of here, and I want to get it running. So um, what I did was I collected all the extension cords I could possibly find, both mine and then what I found around here, because it's, it's a junk pile. And... Um, got my battery charger using it as a booster pack which isn't recommended but you know it works and um i've been there's something wrong with the starter so it needs a new starter but um you know i've been like winding it up so it engages with the flywheel grabbing the uh the thing and putting that on there and uh you know it's kind of a whole like process can't even explain it but we have spark so I'll show you guys if I can, if I can manage the, the the deal here. Maybe I can prop you guys up and and show you what the what the spark looks like. So let me attempt to do that. So this is like an eight-handed affair, but <laughs> you, you'll see. Hold on. All right. So I gotta wind up like the little like gear so it engages with the with the flywheel. It'll kind of lock into place. Okay. It's there it is. That's there. I gotta grab the PTO shaft. And then I gotta kind of spin it over. Let's see what we get. So there you go. It uh it popped the little like internal breaker that the battery box has, but um, not a problem. We got it spinning over, probably the longest I've had it. And you saw that we had pretty good spark. So uh, let's shoot a little fire down the hole, see if we can't get her to, to kick over a bit. Yeah, let's do it. So we're gonna go for like half throttle uh, and whatever choke is there. I'm not putting the vice grips back on to to adjust it. You know, let me go full throttle so I can get this stuff in. And, uh... That's enough to explode. Okay, uh... Back down to, like, half throttle. And, uh... Okay. Get my thing going here. I don't even know if it'll spin over if it has, like with, with compression, if it has a spark plug in it, because it was struggling as is. So, 
we might be out of luck today and I might be ordering a new starter. But here we go. Fire in the hole. Yeah, it's spinning a little too slow. Let me try it again. Nope, hold on. Come on. find the, the not compression spot and see if we can go from there so it'll get enough going. Come on! Darn it, the thing popped off the, the flywheel. Okay, here we go. Nah, it doesn't have enough. Darn it. I'm gonna keep trying it. All right, work it over by hand. I don't know which stroke we're on right now, but pray. Here we go. Oh, it kind of like kicked back there a little bit. Uh, yeah, so that's not gonna happen. Um, he still doesn't work. I wonder, uh, I wonder if we like grabbed a screwdriver or something, if we can like jump the, um, jump the negative and the positive, see if we can get anything from, from the battery. Alright, um, I'm going to check and see if I have power up to the starter. I don't think I do. Uh, and we're gonna try and do a bit of electrical. So I'm gonna actually pull the tank out of the way because it's just in the way. I'm gonna try and get my head in there and, and see what's going on and I'll, I'll get back to you. All right, kids, I'm back. So, pulled this little panel off under here. Didn't pull the gas tank because I really don't want to still. And uh, found the solenoid. And uh, I think I'm just gonna try and jump it. So let's see, let's see what we get here. Okay, so the starter is good. It just doesn't have any juice now to fire off, I don't think. Come on. Battery might be a little low. I'm gonna check that, give it a charge. Uh, Cause it did kick over a little bit before off camera. I'm not gonna lie to you. So um, we'll get hit a little more juice, uh, charge the battery up a little bit and we'll, we'll, we'll give it the, the go. So uh, while we're waiting on the battery to charge, you got this uh, old air filter and there's a, a tractor that the woman was nice enough to let me use her parts. So um, it's a Craftsman. And I know, I know she doesn't know much about it, so, but it was still nice of her to make the offer, but I'm thinking uh, maybe this air filter is something we can exchange for a slightly better one. Yeah, there it is. All right, uh, pop that off and take a look. This one's kind of neat too. It's got lights on it, and I don't know if it's a Kohler, but it's got a starter solenoid, so 
I guess you could put that on, but I'd rather buy one. Um, from brand new. I'll get that after. Um, ah, it's a smaller, uh, smaller diameter. Well, it was worth a shot. I guess. Uh, you know, you never, you never can tell until you, you know, give it a shot. So, uh, all right. I'll pop this back on. Any day now, any, any minute, any hour. All right, there we go. Um, as far as parts, if we could get off this, I'm seeing, sorry, there's a bug on me. Um, as far as parts, not much else, maybe a spring or two, um, if we need it. Probably that, that solenoid's probably not, not good either. It's a hit or miss. Uh, so like I said, We'll install a new one. I'll do it, probably do it off camera. It's a simple swap out, um, you know, line for line. But but this one's pretty cool. Bear drive, Sears looks kind of menacing. Maybe it'd be a good candidate for uh, like a race mower if I were to build one. But you know, don't got the room or time because now I got this, and I think it's cool. And I think I'm gonna restore it and enter it in my local fair because they always have a. A nice showing of tractors and there's only really one other one like this and i forget uh what brand it is uh, but this would look pretty pretty all done up and heck maybe some of this stuff will come off a little bit of a scotch bright wash uh who's to say but waiting for that battery there i'm gonna have some water and i'll meet you back here when we're ready to give her another go Still waiting on the battery to charge up. So uh, while we're waiting, grab the old float bowl off and uh, we'll see what she's all about. It's gonna end up raining on my hands, so yeah. Gas doesn't smell terrible. It's not the worst stuff that I've ever smelled, but um, it's definitely not good. There we go. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, uh, not bad, but not great either. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's chunky, gross garbage. Maybe it'll run off this gas. The carburetor might not be clogged, um, but you know we'll, we'll see. Uh, so I'm gonna shoot it with a little starter fluid because it's basically kind of like carb cleaner. And I'll wipe out the bottom of that, wipe around the bowl, and uh, stick it back on there. But otherwise, it looks to be in good shape. I'm not gonna go too crazy right now, uh, but it looks it looks to be pretty clean, I like the needle and seat and stuff. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. I'm not worried about it right now. Um, but if we get this thing fired up off of starting fluid, maybe I'll uh, open this back up. And let the fuel flow in maybe it'll maybe it'll go uh which would be awesome if it if it'll run uh off, off of this old gas but no matter what i'm sure i have to pull the carb clean it out uh and i'll do that in my own time because there's plenty of good guides for for cleaning carburetors on youtube uh just look one up and grab yourself a rebuild kit if, if they sell them but this looks like it's just going to be a, a kind of a one and done blow everything out with the air compressor uh, and then from there, we'll we'll start digging into it, screwing around with it, and I'll I'll grab my camera whenever we do. But don't worry, we're not over yet. Still waiting on the battery to charge. I'm gonna clean this out, and I'll meet you back here when it's time to give her another crank. Okay, so I checked on the battery meter. It looks like it's pretty good. Gonna hit with the starting fluid again. Just enough. Not too much. It's perfect. Right. Key is in the on position. Let's give it a shot.
All right, so here's my dumb, you know what? I plugged in the battery charger, and the battery charger wasn't even plugged in. Like, I plugged the, the, the leads on. <laughs> oh, God, I quit. No, I'm kidding. All right. I'm going to plug in the battery for real this time. Wait around a little while longer, and uh, we'll get her. So it's, uh, I believe it's about 10 minutes now, and uh got the battery charger on. See the needle still working its way down to the zero for, for charged. But uh, I think I'm going to go fill up my compressor uh, with the, the nozzle fill the tires. And we're going to throw a few pounds, uh, pounds per. I already inspected all the tires. They look good and everything like that. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing fired up and have it running so we could at least, you know, move it back and forth and, and see what's going on because the brakes might be stuck because the rotors are looking pretty gross in the back. It's got a dry... Uh, it's got dry disc brakes on it, mechanical disc, similar to like a go-kart uh, or something would have. So those could be stuck. And you know, worst case scenario, you pull, we jack it up. I got a jack, pull the wheel off and, uh, you know, just pop the pads out for now um, or, or whatever. Let's see what's going on. We're not going too far. You know, I'm only going across the street uh, and I'll go down the, the lower part there kind of into my into my driveway versus go down here because that's a hill and uh you get some speed going believe it or not <laughs> uh ask me how i know so uh so hopefully it'll run off that old gas because i could just run it out of that old gas and then once it's warmed up we could, could drain the oil and, and all that and i gotta figure out where the drain plugs are and everything um let's see might be in the front somewhere. Do a little research. Um, this, that, whatever. Worst comes to worst. If we need to drain the tank, we'll do it here. So we'll make a mess here. Because if I spilled it in the driveway, I'll be killed. Uh, no more videos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But uh, we're getting there. We're, we're really getting there. We're doing good. I'm back. I made myself a, a sandwich. Man, is it hot out. It's like 91. I'm wearing jeans. And a gray t-shirt. And, uh... Thankfully, I'm so, still somewhat in the shade. The sun hasn't moved too much. I'm actually more in the shade now than I was before. So things are turning around. But, uh, as far as the time frame of, of what I've done so far... I, I started on this probably... Like, I actually started turning wrenches around, like noon um and it's now almost three o'clock so three hours maybe by the time we finish maybe three and a half four hours it's not too bad for for reviving the a tractor that that sat out for for 20 years and it's a pretty good trade-off 20 years for four hours you know you decide <laughs> but um filled up the tires got that done had enough to do all four of them because most of them still had a little bit of air in them I put about 20 pounds in the back and because I wasn't able to find a, a rating on there, so I figured that was a safe bet. And the ones on the front said max 28, so I put around like 24 in. Um, and they all, they're all they all holding air pretty good, it seems. And uh, it picked it up quite a bit because before it was, it was sagging down in the front. And it, it, it dug some some divots here where it, where it sat. And, and so, yeah. And then I flipped over whatever that... I think it's an aerator of some sort, little implement over there, uh, to get that out of the way. So maybe, hopefully, we could uh, back up a little bit if it, if it goes into reverse, good, and, and the clutch works and everything, and uh, and just kind of rip through here because there's nothing in there besides the weeds. So we'll just tear through it. So uh, battery's still still cooking. Um, and so I'm going to finish up my sandwich, and I'm still going to wait around, but for you, it'll be, like, instant. <clears throat> All right, guys, I think it's that time, finally. Third, third, fourth, I don't know what time we're on. It's it's a try, so it's going to work. It's a charm, so same as always. Load her up. All right, half throttle-ish.
key on. Whatever that noise is. All right, let's do it. Oh, come on, come on, come on. That thing is actually running off the tank of gas. Like it's it's gonna smoke a little bit because I put the PV blaster in there, but it's already clearing up. Look at this thing. 20 years. This is awesome. Let's see if it'll idle. No way. This friggin' thing is idling. Holy crap. There's no way. Oh my god. I mean, it's pretty quiet. I'm just gonna let it run. I'm gonna let it warm up. And, uh, hell, let's, I'll set you guys up. We'll freaking throw this thing in gear. Let's see what's going on. Let's do it. This is awesome. second and we'll see uh, maybe we could start it uh, in gear because it doesn't want to slow down just enough to go into gear but it, it seems like it's gonna it wants to, to take off so um, I'll start it back up again and we'll see if we can if we can go so let me, let me try it again. Okay. We learned some important things there. Number one, clutch does not work. That's a, that's a hard no on the clutch. So, uh, okay, so I threw it in neutral, pushed it out of its grave uh, quite a ways, and uh, I'm going to put it in first gear, and um, I'm going to try and uh and drive it go out here and go back up the hill and kind of come back around and then we'll put it back together and, and whatever probably gonna do the carburetor looks like it's actually leaking like it's flooding Come on, yeah it's not gonna it, it literally got worse okay well hopefully it didn't flood it out so i'm gonna stick it in i think that's first gear and I'm gonna like idle it and I'm just gonna freaking crank the wheel I'm gonna jump on it and we're just we're just gonna go ride it so I'll pick you guys up because it's kind of like a, another two-handed affair deal here where I gotta I gotta do that so 
and we're gonna go that way. So I'm gonna start it up, and I'll bring the camera back when I when I got her fired up. And we're off. Kick it in third up the hill. We'll turn around, stop, and then uh, see what we can do. All right, let's hit this curve. Look at that! This thing just. Let's try, uh, let's do third gear. So, let's have one over. Okay, that's third gear. I'm point the steering wheel a little that way, keep it at an idle. Gotta get my, my key. Pop the hood. Man, that was a lot of fun. My phone ran out of space um, as I was going up the hill, so that sucks, so it stopped the video. But, uh, I mean, this thing just, this is shake and bake right here. It's not going fast. I mean, higher PM if this thing was running correctly. 
it, I think it does like five miles an hour, as someone said, uh, in, thir in like third gear. But um, it's fun. Like it's, I, I'd love to get the clutch working because for me, it's fun to like shift gears in between and double clutch. And because my neighbor's got an old Ford tractor that I've worked on before. And it's, it's like the same thing where uh, you have, um, where you have it like that. And it, it's just really cool. It's it's grody, but I mean, like, we block up all the, we lock all those ports, tape them off, we power wash the thing down. I mean, like the tires are holding air. It's a Firestone tire. When was the last time you saw a, a Firestone tractor tire? I mean, that's just cool. And they hold air, and they're not that badly cracked. Um, I'm sure there's like a trick where you can make them look good. Uh, I'm really really bummed, like I said before, about the the clutch and everything. Like you press on this, and, and the little fork kind of comes back but i'm not really sure what's supposed to happen i gotta do my research on how these work ask around on the on the facebook uh but otherwise i mean it fires up and it runs well that about wraps it up ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this video i went and took the tractor took it to my neighbor she said i could store it there for a few days good nice guy and uh here's the pit where she sat for for 20 years i mean you got the two tires in front and the, or you got the two front and the two rear and yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of junk around it. We cleared that out. So now hopefully it'll kind of fill in with weeds and grass. So I don't really have to mow it because there's nothing here to mow anyway. But, <laughs> you know, uh, it was a great revival. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, follow along and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more on the on the old Cub Cadet, our new little project series. Uh, I'm going to do a restoration in memory of the, the woman, the widow's husband he was a very nice guy i miss him a lot and she does as well and so uh i think it's only right that we we do a restoration in his honor still use it however it's still going to be fully functional like he'd want it to be so until next time guys stay safe out there thank you i'm out